There's absolutely nothing wrong with having more intelligence. The problem is what will humanity use that intelligence for? The question is, will we use it to create that abundance or will we use it to create more competition and concentration of power and security threats and so on? The difference between them is ethics. The difference between them is what will we deploy AI for? What will the government ensure that the citizens of this government, of this, of this country, are investing in when it comes to using artificial intelligence? It's not AI for good. Remember, there is a big difference. AI ethics, so, so AI for good is use AI to cure cancer. AI ethics is make sure AI doesn't lie. Ethics is different than good implementations. Okay? Make, uh, make sure that AI does not cheat. Make sure that AI understands that it shouldn't hurt a human or any other living being, and so on. When I was young, when I first really started in the workplace, yes, I am that old, I coded mainframes. Mainframes meant that the only way I could actually use my tech uh, skills was to work in an environment that could afford $20, $40 million to buy a mainframe. Everyone today, can code a bit of AI. Everyone, literally everyone. Everyone today can use AI to create a better economic prosperity. So what is your government's focus on participation, economic participation in that massive, massive wave of economic growth? Trillions of dollars about to be created with artificial intelligence. Representation and language representation, I, I spoke about that. So I'll, I'll say this openly and please don't be offended. An engineer in chat GPT today uses reinforcement learning to teach the machine what is right and what is wrong. If you, represent, if you present ChatGPT with a question and, the, and ChatGPT answered and said, well, a woman in Pakistan was killed uh, because of A, B, and C, the reinforcement learning engineer, because he's Calif based in California and San Francisco, will answer and say, don't call her a woman. What? Like, is this really what matters in this sentence? Are you, are you teaching the machine anything about what Pakistan is? Are you teaching the machine anything about what killing is? And this, di uh, this you know, bias, if you want, is very, very clear to the English language, and it's very, very clear to different cultures than your country. And the only way your country can be represented is if enough knowledge from your country is available for AI to learn from. That's a very, very key change because once the data is biased, the AI will be learning from AI. Understand this, please. Again, technical a little bit. What is about to happen is that in the last year, 2023, more documents and code was created by AI than by humans. 70% of the articles created uh, you know, in Bloomberg last year were created by AI. Those articles are now the feed into future AI to learn from. So the bias is accelerating. So we need to have our governments push for cultural representation. You need to have Serbian into it. You, have, you, you, you need to have every language, every culture. Africa needs to be represented, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Indian subcontinent and so on and so forth. And then finally, there is a lot of talk about government regulation. I don't think you can regulate AI. How can you regulate something that's a billion times smarter than you? You can regulate humans using AI. A great example of that is your government should issue a decree immediately that criminalizes using fake videos without declaring that they're created by AI. This is um, an important move because then basically, you know, you may not prevent people from actually putting deep fakes on the internet, but those deep fakes now are liable. You know, they, they actually now have the ability, you have the ability to tell them, you know, they, this is criminal, you're lying to people. And some, so those sorts of, uh, of, of regulations are key. They are regulations of how will AI be used. If you lay off, you know, some, gov some governments may choose to do this, others may not, but if you lay off 70% of your workforce and replace them with AI, do you have to pay a slightly different uh, tax structure as a company so that we can you know, reskill and re-employ or uh, compensate for those, you know, citizens that might actually sit unemployed. So social security, I think, is one of the key, key uh, uh, topics here. And social security will go into two directions. One is jobs, of course, and compensation. But the other, interestingly, is human connection. And I know this sounds really crazy because is it really the responsibility of a government to ensure that its humans are connecting with humans and not machines? My answer is yes, because it becomes existential. Because if you look at my generation, my dad, my, my late dad, which I loved very much, could not operate a video, a VCR machine. 
when he wanted to play a VCR machine, he would call me and say, Habibi, just you know, put the, 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 the tape correctly and press the right button. I am very comfortable with you know, computers and screens and so on. They, our kids, are completely comfortable look, talking to a machine. As a matter of fact, on average, the Gen uh, uh, Z will talk to a machine more than they talk to a human. Now, when you really think about this, you're taking, and that machine is based where? Outside your country. So you're taking that co human connection that is the core of what a nation is, and you're handing that over to, an, to a machine.